On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to download several years of data and learn how to do some basic frequency domain analysis using pandas for interpolation and resampling. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to take advantage of our friends at the Iowa Environmental Mesonet and the massive amount of data that they have to learn how to do some basic frequency domain analysis. So if you go over to the IEM website, I've gone to the ASOS, AWOS, METAR data download page. And I'm going to look at the Norman Westheimer Oklahoma ASOS station. I am just going to get air temperature and Celsius. You could get everything, but I don't need everything and I don't want larger files. And I'm going to go from January 1st of 2012 to January 1st of 2019. So we're going to get a large chunk of data here, especially when you're working with or, or trying to look at frequency domain, you need lots and lots of samples. And we're going to talk about some basics of frequency domain analysis, but this isn't really meant to be a signal processing tutorial. I'm going to keep it in UTC time. That really doesn't matter for me. Uh, comma delimited is fine. We don't need Latin lawn. Using an M for missing data is great because that's going to be easy to filter. And I'm going to get routine and specials. So then we can click and get data. It will either display the data in a web browser which I think is generally going to be kind of slower for this much, or you can save it directly to your computer. Once I've done that, I copy it over into my folder where I'm going to work with my notebook and let's take a look at it. So I'm going to pull up my little file explorer here in Jupyter lab. That's control B. And if I look at oun.txt, we see we've got station, a valid time, year, month, day, hour, minute, and a temperature. Now these are roughly sampled, it looks like at 15, 35, and 55 past every hour, but there are some missings in here. There are some random samplings in here from the special obs. So we need to have evenly sampled data to do effective time series analysis and convert things over into the frequency domain. So we need to resample this I'm going to resample it to a 15 minute interval. We could resample it to 30 minutes or an hour. Depends on how much data you're looking at here. But 15 minutes seems reasonable to me. That is going to be a little bit of upsampling. So there are advantages and disadvantages to doing things like upsampling or downsampling data. Again, you should look at some great DSP resources on that. But let's see how we do it and how pandas makes our lives a lot easier here. So I'm going to go ahead and control B to get rid of that off the side. So I'm going to import pandas as PD, import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and then we use our matplotlib inline magic. So the first thing we need to do is get the data in. It's going to be pandas read CSV. Our file is oun.txt. Remember, tab completion in Jupyter Lab does work on file names that are in the same directory, so that's super handy. And let's just run it and see what happens. So it works. And if we look at our data, we have station valid and temp C. Okay. For the resample method to work, we need the index of the data, so this index over here, to be something that has time in it. So we want to use the time column, or a valid here, as our index column. The other thing I know is that there are going to be some missing values in here, and they're designated by M. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those Ms with NANs so we know they're missing. So let's start with that. 
in a values is the keyword argument that we're looking for. And we can pass M. Now any M's will be replaced with NAN. So that's pretty straightforward. Index call is going to be valid. And one that I always forget when I'm doing this is that we need to say parse dates is true. Otherwise, the index column will be the string of the valid time, but it won't actually be parsed into a date time object. Then when you try to do things like resample or interpolate, you're going to get error messages that you don't have any valid date times in there. And it's kind of confusing. So don't forget parse dates. Now if we look at the head of our data frame, we see we've got these nice date times over here as the index and then station and temp C as our columns. We could drop station if we want to, but that's okay. It's not doing any harm here. So let's look at the length of our data frame, 171,140 rows. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of those missing values. They're not doing us any good and they might uh, pose problems with later analyses. So we can say df equals df dot drop in a. And by default, if there are any missing values in a given row or index of data, that entire row will be dropped. Now, if we look at the len of df, we see we only lost roughly a hundred observations. So that's not bad out of that much data. So now let's work on resampling. I'm going to go ahead and resample to 15 minutes, upsampling slightly, as I mentioned. That does mean that we're somewhat creating data out of thin air here. We've got roughly three observations an hour, not at the times that I want, and I'm going to resample to top of the hour, 15 past, 30 past, 45 past, and again at the top of the hour. So we're going to be doing some interpolation in the end here. And you might think that's what resample does, but it's not. Resample is great for doing downsampling, but as you'll see, it doesn't perform exactly what we would expect when we're going the other way. So I'm going to say df resampled is df.resample. And here's a great time to look at the documentation because you might be tempted to say something like 15m. That turns out to be 15 months. We want to resample to 15 minutes, which is 15 T. There are many abbreviations. Unfortunately, they don't share much of the date time nomenclature. There are also some more business centric ones like resampling to quarterly. You can sum, mean. So say you had uh, sales for something that you had every month's worth of data, you could call dot resample one Q dot sum to take everything in each quarter and sum it up. But we don't want to do any of that here. We just want to resample to 15 minutes. So now if I look at the length of DF resamples, or resampled, let's change that. There we go. We have 245,471. Now it turns out what this has done it is created rows in our data table for every 15 minutes. But if there was not already data there, it's just filled with a NAN. And that's because we didn't specify we wanted to sum or mean. Even if we did specify, say mean, if there was nothing in that 15 minute bin, then it's still gonna have a NAN. And that results in some strange behavior. In fact, I saw initially some unexpected things when I was looking at the spectra of these data. And this is what led me down to read the documentation, which is what you should always do in the first place on how these methods work. So what we need to do is interpolate data that we don't have. So I'm going to say DF resampled equals DF resampled dot interpolate. And just as a placeholder for trying different methods. Uh, you see the default when I do a shift tab to look at the doc string is linear, but this is sort of a flag to me that I am doing linear. 
So now that has run. And if we look at the head of this data frame, we see every 15 minutes and nothing else, we have a temperature value. It did not interpolate station because it doesn't know how to interpolate strings linearly. That's fine. It doesn't matter for us. So finally, the whole point of this exercise was to look at a basic uh, spectra, or in this case, we're going to look at a power spectral density. Again, if the difference between those two things doesn't mean a lot to you, I highly recommend looking at some digital signal processing or signal analyses texts. But in NumPy, this are map. But in Matplotlib, this is very straightforward. Plot dot power spectral density or PSD. We want to do it on our resampled data frame. So data frame resampled. The temp C column. If we look at the doc string here, it's going to want a few things. First, we have to give it the data that we're going to work with. To get meaningful frequencies, we need to tell it the sample frequency that we've got here. So what is our sample frequency? It's every 15 minutes. How do we convert from time or period to frequency? It's the reciprocal. So 1 over 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes, gives me the sampling frequency in hertz. If I run this cell, you see we get a lot of output, and the doc string tells you what all of that is. It's pretty much the frequency and the, uh, the value of the PSD here. So I'm going to suppress that. I'm just going to assign underscore equals. Remember, that's sort of a throwaway. We don't want all of these things, so I'm just going to assign it to a variable called underscore. And we see a few things here. We've got some little peaks in this plot. We've got some interesting looking things down here that should immediately start triggering alarm bells in your head of that's probably some sort of artifact. So what is this plot? We have frequency on the x-axis in hertz and decibel per hertz, or the power spectral density. For now, think of this as somewhat of amplitude. How much of that signal's amplitude is at that frequency with some normalizations? I'm going to modify how many points are considered in the FFT to help bring out the signal a little bit more clearly here. And that's done with the keyword argument in FFT. This is most effective and fastest if the number of points is a power of 2. So I'm going to say 2 to the power of 10. And now when I run that, you see that I get a little bit finer spacing on my frequency bend, so I can see some more detail up here at the lower frequencies. Again, there's some signal processing magic as to why that's happening. But now let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. So I'm going to plot an AXV line or a vertical line. And I'm going to do so at X of, remember this is going to be in frequency. So 1 over 86400, 0, 0, 86,400. I'm going to make it a black line and an alpha of 0 0.5. So if I run that, wow, we see that that line corresponds exactly with this peak. So now I'm going to add another one. Plot AXV line, X equals, and I'm going to use half that. So 1 over 43,200. Color. Uh, this time I'm going to make it green alpha of 0 0.5. So this is a lower amount of time, but that means a higher frequency. So this is the number of seconds in a day. This is the number of seconds in 12 hours. And if we look at that, we see the number of seconds in the day is the black line. The number of seconds in hours is the green line. We have a higher frequency at 12 hours versus 24, so we're 
further to the right on the plot, and that lines up with another peak. So what we're seeing here is diurnal temperature cycling. We're seeing that we get hot in the day, cold at night, pretty much always throughout this data. And if we look down here in the lower frequencies with even more data where we could take a larger FFT windows, we would start seeing things like seasonal fluctuations or yearly changes or even climatic changes if we were able to have a long enough data set for that. And we see that we have all of these decaying in amplitude peaks here. So 24, 12, 6, 3, and so on. Those are called harmonics. So the one other thing I want to point out is out here. So I'm going to take a guess at where that is. I'm going to say that it is an X of 1 over 3600. So what's that? That is the number of seconds in an hour. I'm going to make it a magenta line. And I nailed it on the first try. So how did that happen? Well, I know that we're not going to plot out past what's called the Nyquist frequency. Uh, we were using 15-minute uh, sampling before. So that means we're not going to resolve anything smaller than 30 minutes in time. We have to have at least two samples there. And this is about halfway across that plot. So from 0 or DC up to 30 minutes, uh, this should be right in the middle at an hour. And this is what we would call an artifact. Not going to go into all the details of why, but when you see things that look sort of like this in your spectra or in your PSD plots, you should start worrying about sample artifacts and what you can do about them. But that's a topic for a completely another set of MetPy Mondays. I hope that you found this useful and that you'll start thinking about your data sum in frequency space. Tools like Pandas and Matplotlib make it much, much easier than it used to be to resample, interpolate, and analyze your data. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.